Hi, and welcome to the New Mexico Motorsports Report. I'm your host, David Swope, joined by my buddy, Spencer Hill. We have a really good show for you tonight, and we're going to start off with the Unser Racing Museum event calendar. First up is going to be the Camping World Truck Series, with their next event being May 4th, and that's going to be at Dover. Then we go over to Xfinity Racing Action, which will be tomorrow, April 28th, at Talladega Super Speedway, back on a big track this weekend. And then NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series action live Sunday, April 29th from Talladega Super Speedway. IndyCar action is going to be May 12th at Indianapolis Grand Prix. And Formula One returns Sunday, April 29th. NHRA will round out the national news with April 27th and 29th being the NGK Spark Plugs NHRA Four Wide Nationals. Yeah, that's a lot of good stuff. And i uh, got to start off by asking you, how was your weekend, man? It was a good weekend. Didn't do anything racing related, but uh, caught caught up on a lot of stuff, hung out with some friends, and really just nice, relaxing weekend overall. How about you? It was it was a great weekend, and unfortunately, I didn't do any racing either, but got to watch a lot. And of course, we're going to be talking a little bit about the, the Pro Series coming up, but on the local scene uh, this weekend, you got the Albuquerque Dragway um, on the 28th. You got a street to strip from 11 to 4. It's 25 bucks you can bring out your vehicle, take, do as many passes as you want. And then on Sunday, they're gonna have the Derek Sanchez Memorial Race. It's a bracket race uh, with some bonus points and the gates open at that for that at 9 a.m. Sandia Speedway, uh, tomorrow they're gonna have April 28th, the Clay Oval is gonna get started with the Car Crafters Clay Craze. And of course, April 28th and 29th is the Charlie Fagan Performance Driving School. For all you motocross fans, of course, mark your calendars for this. May 5th and May 6th is round two of the Moriarty Motocross 2018 race season. And the way that basically works is on Saturday, it's a practice session, so you can come out and watch this. And then of course, on Sunday, they, uh, they have the, uh, the pro race. And uh, I know you were telling me that you went out and did some, some arena cross. Um, what, what's the big difference between, say, uh, arena cross and just, and, and just regular motocross? Well, arena cross is really close quarters racing. Of course, it's held inside arenas like the one that we have here at the Santa Ana Star Center uh, versus motocross where it's a little bit more open track and uh, a lot more speed really happening. Of course, those tracks are bigger as well. So. A lot of the same bikes go. I mean, you have a little bit different packages as far as shocks go, but both are equally exciting and the fan base is just awesome. I gotta ask you, in both forms of racing, is still making it through the first turn the biggest part of motocross racing? That was one of the sketchiest things that I had to go through. Again, <laughs> like I said, I'd never done a gate start before, so when that dropped, I mean, it was real. It, it, it was in front of you. Everybody was going for that same spot, going into the first turn, trying to get that whole shot and it's a feeling that I can't even describe. It's just, it's, it's amazing. I don't know how all the pro riders do it, um, but really just highlight reel for sure over there as well, far as the whole shot goes. Well, we've had a lot of pros, of course, you know, come out of the Moriarty um, track. Of course, Jason Anderson that's uh, mm -hmm. racing in the, the 450s now. But the other cool thing that's been going on out at Sandia is they've started the flat track. And last week they started running the flat track and both you and I were just, just commenting on the fact we wish we got to see that. Uh, talk a little bit about maybe some of the divisions that ran on Saturday. We had open vintage class, open knobby and open modern down there on the small track at Sandia. Again, these bikes a little bit different from the motocross bikes that you'd see on TV, but they are super fast. They, uh, they have anything from uh, vintage tires to the knobby tires, which is much like the mm -hmm. motocross tires and they're doing a lot of sliding with the bikes. Of course, they're laying them down, really getting on their side. Takes a lot of guts and glory to take one of those wins. Uh, in the open vintage class, Ben took the win with James Hozier finishing second, Kenny Crater third, Brian Trippy fourth, and Ralph Cohen fifth. Well, Brian, Brian Tripp, He's going. He's going oh, to get you. Trip. No, that's all right. Hey, I, I did that. I did that, that for one. years until he corrected me on the radio. So uh, at least I got to correct you on TV. Um, but uh, one thing I was curious about: Are they running on the the quarter mile, like you, where you run the, the the sprints? Well, I mean eighth mile, I guess. Um, or are they running on the bigger track? It's my understanding that they are running on the shorter track, the which is again pretty small track, even for motorcycles. Uh, with the micro sprints, I know that track 
throughout the night starts out a little bit heavier, gets drier and drier and drier, and I'm sure they handled a lot of the same situation this week in Sandia. Does it change the grooves on you guys? I mean, did, did the motorcycles cut some different grooves that they need to recut before the, like the mini sprints run on it? Their track is a little bit different. Again, I've never ran a flat track motorcycle before, but I have ran with them uh, back in the go-karting days. And from what I remember, the, uh, the track ended up being a little bit more rutted out than you normally would see. Uh, again, their tires are considerably smaller than ours. You know, we're talking about inches and inches of difference. And um, they really like their track a little bit more dry because they do lay the bikes down. They want to be able to have their left foot glide instead of, you know, getting stuck into the ground. and um, really great racing though on that small track. That's right out at Kaplan Memorial I mean you guys ran um, uh, speedway carts and they ran the flat track. Were there, were there other types of carts out there that ran out at, at, at Kaplan as well? It was just the speedway carts. Uh, we did have micro sprints used to run there quite often too. I believe we had some cage carts later on and uh, that's pretty much it though. I don't think we ever had, we might've had one or two QRC races, which are those big outlaw carts. Awesome. Uh, really big in California and Indiana right now. But other than that, it was mainly just speedway carts. That was the big division. Well, and of course I ran um, road racing carts out at uh, Triple T, later became Route 66. Um, of course we got a great um, indoor track. But the one, one thing I always wanted to do was those enduro carts where you yeah. like lay down on the asphalt. Uh, did you ever get a chance to do anything like that? Never got a chance to do anything like that. Uh, I did get to do an enduro race, quote unquote, in a go-kart. Uh, that was just at AIK though. And it, that was a really cool event. I wish they would do that some more. It was basically a two hour race where you have two drivers that make up a team, two or three. And um, you just go back and forth pitting and was really, really fun. It, I mean, even the driver exchanges were exciting because I remember one thing you had to be careful about right. was uh, the seat belts in those. Right. You have to go super, super slow. So it looked really goofy because we'd come blazing in the pits. And uh, when we come to a stop, we took off the seat belt really quick. Other driver hopped in and then it looked like slow motion trying to get the seat belt well, back it's like on. <laughs> you know, so I mean, that was one thing that I really to do remember from that. It was, it was pretty funny. That, that's pretty awesome. So out of Sandia, they also ran the, uh, the Hornets Cruisers, the Street Sox, the X Mods, and of course they had the 360 Sprints. I um, want to uh, you know, give a shout out to Ariel Bonesteel mm -hmm. getting her first victory um, in the Cruisers. Uh, Hornets division, uh, Rick Bolter with a 5X. I mean, you might as well just go ahead and hand that guy the trophy. Um, uh, he's awesome. Uh, Danny uh, Gross uh, Jr. in the uh, X Mods uh, and in the three, three, uh, 360 wing sprints, uh, you had the number 45 of Jason Grady. But let's talk a little bit about car shows that we got coming up. Uh, tomorrow is actually the uh, 18th annual Park in the Park car show out in Rio Rancho. And I tell you, to me, that was always the car show that starts the season, but I swear it used to be in May. It just keeps getting earlier and earlier and earlier with these car shows. Well, there's the, more and more shows coming here into the Albuquerque metro area. That's true. Well, and, and that's the one thing about the, the weather here, of course, we don't have as much rust. And as a matter of fact, I got a garage fine on a 74 Dart that, uh, that we're working on right now. And uh, so I got both a fastback and a notch. So I'm going to build a, build a drag car, but uh, I don't want any of the police to know anything about that. But anyway, um, and so coming up also uh, on Saturday, tomorrow is the Veterans Car Show at the Ver uh, Veterans Memorial Park at 1100 Louisiana Southeast. Of course, the Cinco de Mayo show that we're going to be out uh, hosting at the Barley Room. Mm -hmm. So I invite you to come out and uh, proceeds from that are going to go to the Blue Star Moms. And you could just register to, there at day of, which is at uh, Eubank in Spain. Uh, you can come out there and get started. Uh, setup starts at 8, 9 o'clock car show. We've got a live band, split decisions going to be playing, which actually, if you guys have seen the footage from earlier this year on my birthday, I actually played the cowbell with the band. So for a $100 <laughs> donation, I'll play the cowbell for you uh, there, $100 for the Blue Star Moms. If you have a business and you would like to come out and participate, it's $50 for a booth, um, and you write the check directly to the Blue Star Moms, so it's a complete donation um, and it goes to uh, care packages they send to active duty military. And the only other one I want to make a note of uh, is May 12th is the uh, NAMI walk and car show at the Balloon Fiesta Park and that's to help raise money and awareness for uh, people that are dealing with um, mental illness and how it impacts uh, the individuals um, as well as the family. But I also wanted to remind you, if you ever miss any of these shows, we also have a radio show on Saturday mornings from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. 
on the ESPN radio affiliate 101.7 FM. Uh, we also publish a magazine that has all of the information in it so you can keep track of the different things. All of these are available at the website and that's nmmotorsportsreport.com. So of course you can pick all of that up. But we've got some great guests coming up. Tell us a little bit about uh, your buddy Jeff's coming on. Yeah, we have Jeff Argo, trophy truck driver from Las Lunas, New Mexico. Uh, we have a lot of really cool things to talk about in that segment. Again, that's coming up, segment number three. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> well, and of course, uh, we're going to be joined by uh, Mark Powell with the New Mexico Independent Auto, Auto Dealers Association. We're going to talk a little bit about curb stoning. And I'm going to tell you, I didn't even know what curb stoning was me until either. he mentioned it to me. Yeah, well, you can learn all about it. Um, uh, you know, as long as you, uh, you follow the rules, it's okay to, you know, buy and sell, you know, one or car here. But if you're actually going into enterprise, you should actually do it right instead of just setting up on the corner. And, of course, we're probably going to argue a little... Uh, cup race in a little I bit later. I guarantee we're going to be that, arguing a little bit here I, shortly. I think we might be in agreement on Christopher, Be Christopher Bell, though. I do agree with you on Christopher <laughs> Bell, but we have a lot more to talk about with the NASCAR Xfinity Series from Richmond. Awesome. Well, uh, stay tuned. We've got a whole lot more coming up on the New Mexico Motorsports Report here on the ProView Network, Comcast 26. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Legacy Boxing Promotions presents Root to Glory. Bad Blood, June 23rd in Legends Theater at Route 66 Casino, Albuquerque. It's Bad Blood in the co-main event when Mike Matt Alderete fights Max Mad Heyman in the main event. Josh Pitbull Torres against Christian Cabral. Undefeated Jason Sanchez takes on Eric Manriquez. Aaron Angel Baby Perez fights George Royball. Plus, fights by Ronnie Mongoose Baca, Christian Castigo Castillo, Matthew Papitas Escobel, and Augustine Perez. Route to Glory, Bad Blood. Did you know Sunrun Solar is the largest residential solar company in the country? Go solar and save 20% on your electric bill for as little as zero down. Exclusive partner with Costco and member guests receive special benefits. Call Mike Gutierrez at 505-227-0791. Sunrun Solar. DreamStyle Remodeling has been wowing homeowners in New Mexico since 1989. Selected as best custom home remodeler for three consecutive years by readers of the Albuquerque Journal, we're also your exclusive provider for top home improvement brands like Renewal by Anderson, Four Seasons, Blaze King, and many others. Founded and headquartered in Albuquerque, DreamStyle Remodeling is family owned and now employs more than 500 people across the southwestern U.S. In fact, we've helped more than 60,000 thousand homeowners improve their home in New Mexico, Arizona, California, Idaho, and West Texas. We're committed to providing a superior customer experience. We've earned 4.6 stars with hundreds of online reviews and have an A-plus with the BBB. DreamStyle Remodeling is a proud supporter of UNM Athletics. Visit our beautiful 10,000 square foot showroom at 1460 Renaissance Boulevard across from Sam's Club or DreamStyleRemodeling.com to make your home remodeling dreams come true. When I train for American Ninja Warrior, I schedule regular workouts to stay in shape. To keep my car in Ninja Tough shape, I head to a Napa Auto Care Center for regular maintenance and genuine Napa Auto Parts. Like brakes and batteries. I trust my Napa Auto Care Center for quality parts and quality service. And with the 24 month, 24,000 mile nationwide warranty, I drive away with peace of mind every time. Visit AutoCareNM.com to find a location near you. The Barley Bowl, a proud sponsor of ProView Networks for over nine years, is pleased to introduce Black Iron Catering. From weddings and family reunions to birthdays and office parties, Black Iron Catering is perfect for any event. Contact Jamie at 505-459-8259 and book your event today. Black Iron Catering, let us bring our kitchen to you. Car Crafters, proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Are you sure we're supposed to be doing this? Don't worry, I've watched him do it a thousand times. Come on, what's the worst that can happen? No, bad dog. Hi, welcome to Car Crafters. What happened? 
Don't worry, we'll make it like it never happened. It's like it never happened. Folks, there's no other way but to be all in. Either he's Lord of all, or he is not Lord at all. And you can experience the real and authentic, true life change that only God can provide to humanity. See, when we truly encounter Jesus and purpose to know him and follow his teachings, hashtag life change will occur. Duke City Sports Bar. Proud supporter of Pro View Sports and New Mexico Youth Athletics. Catch all the sports action from high school, college, pros, and MMA on one of our 35 HD TVs. Start your night off right with any selection from our delicious menu prepared with fresh, never frozen ingredients. Duke City Sports Bar, Albuquerque's newest sports bar. Located on Eubank and Montgomery, dial 505-433-4020. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili, breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations, or visit us online at goldenfriedatabq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of Provia Sports Network. Welcome back to the New Mexico Motorsports Report. I'm your host, uh, David Swope. And joining me today is a couple of guests. Good buddy, Mark Powell. How you doing, David? Doing great. And joining us also is Noelle Davis. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Awesome. Well, uh, Noelle, thank you for, very much for coming in this morning. Um, I come from a long line of car people with, uh, with Lee Davis. Uh, tell me what it, was a little, what it was like growing up around uh, the car business. So I'm actually fifth generation automotive. Wow. So my family, my mother's family, had the original Oldsmobile dealership in Santa Fe. And my father, most recently, owned Gallison Davis Motor Company, and then he retired a few years back. And when he retired, I came to work for the state of New Mexico. Awesome. Well, well welcome. <laughs> and of course, uh, Mark Powell, how you doing, Mark? So grateful, especially to be with you, David. You always bring a smile to our face, and thank you for all the good you do connecting people and helping folks. Well, cars are so big in this town. I mean, you know, Route 66, you've got the whole lore, but then, of course, you know, you, you have cars in, here in town that, because we don't have the rust, you know, that, that lasts forever. And I was joking in the opening segment that I found a garage with, with 374 darts in it. And so if we're gonna have a little bit of fun seeing how, if we can get them running and what kind of fun we could, we could have with that. But uh, uh, with re re Recarnation, a lot of uh, very cutting edge things that you've done with the business, won several awards for your organization and the different things that you've brought. But your latest little endeavor is with the New Mexico Independent Auto Dealers Association. Right. First, I gotta ask you, what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I've asked myself that more than once, but I have to tell you, look, there are almost a thousand small dealers uh, in this state who have to be bonded and licensed, and, and they're small business folks. Most of them have one to five employees, and they work very hard to do it right, and I just felt like maybe I could add a little value in terms of education, support, and working with the state more closely to try to protect consumers. Because look, the fact is, if you don't have a car in this state, it's very difficult to pursue happiness. Right. And so we like to work hand in hand with the state to try to sort of end particularly illegal sales. 
because the cost, you know, illegal dealers cost the state, they cheat consumers, and they support other, you know, illegal behavior. So we're just here to try to give some advice about ways to kind of stay out of trouble when you're buying a used car from a private party. Well, and I want to ask you, Noel, I mean, right there, I think number two below most hated places to go, the dentist <laughs> and then the MBD, right? <laughs> You know, and so I mean, you guys are, are you the car dealer? You, uh, right, right, oh, right. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. So oh, I'm affiliated with two out of the three. Lucky yeah. me. So let's talk a little bit about your role with the state. So what I actually I oversee all the licensing of all the car dealers and the auto recyclers throughout the state of New Mexico, as well as our private MBD offices, which the independent auto dealers is also one of our private offices. So I work with Mark on that as well, but. Within the standpoint of the dealer licensing, we ensure that every licensed dealer in the state of New Mexico is meeting the statutory requirements. And then we help the consumers when they run into a situation where unfortunately a dealer closes without delivering Ooh. the title timely, Ooh. we help those consumers. But the most frequent call I get is somebody saying, well, I bought this car and I went to register it and they told me it has a junk title, but the title I had is a clear blue title from the state of New Mexico and that's because they bought it off of a street corner. Oh. And they didn't understand that that car was actually a rebuilt vehicle that had been flooded in Houston after the last hurricane. So it's really traumatic for this buyer. This person saved up their $3,000 because they need to get to work. And now I'm telling them that car that you've bought is not roadworthy and is not subject to registration in the state of New Mexico. How many um, independent or um I guess curb stoning is the uh, is the terminology for that. How many cars, or what would be maybe the percentage of the cars sold in the state of New Mexico are sold in that manner? Oh my. Well, we have just under two million registered vehicles in the state of New Mexico, and we have just about a thousand registered car dealers. It does fluctuate mm -hmm. daily. Um, we did just go through our annual renewal period, so we are just a little under because we had a few guys who forgot, <laughs> and they're working on becoming compliant at this time. But I'm, you know, I'm not quite sure, honestly. But but I would say it's, it many. must be significant, it is. right? Right, and, the, right. And, and, right. And, and it's one of those things where the consequences to the person who buys right. are so significant. So you know, often these transactions start on the internet somewhere, right? And maybe Craigslist or whatever. And so, look, the very first thing to ask when you call about a car from a private individual is, is your name on the title and on the registration? And if the answer is no, hang up. hang up. Just hang up, because that's an illegal dealer. So, unfortunately, the illegal dealers are negatively impacting our economy. If you think about it, every time somebody buys a vehicle, they're paying motor vehicle excise tax to title and register that car. Well, a curb stoner or an illegal dealer is skipping that. So the end consumer has to pay either twice the motor vehicle excise tax, but more importantly, that person's making two to $3,000 per transaction. Who's reporting that? Mm -hmm. So that in turn hurts all of us because it's, again, gross receipts tax that's not counted, income tax that's not counted. So it really is tax evasion at the same time. So there are like various lots. I can think of one that's on Manal um, that you know is kind of like a, a come and park here, um, sell your car here. Are we talking about things like that? Are we are we talking about the people with the shoe polish on on the uh, the car that are driving around? So we're talking about the people with the shoe polish. The lot that you're actually referencing is those are all licensed dealers. Awesome. And so it's kind of a strip mall almost okay. mentality. Um, they have 10 to 12 dealers. There are several of them throughout the Albuquerque area. There's a few throughout the state as well. But we're talking more about the people that on a weekend go to the abandoned Pizza Hut and park 15 cars there. Mm. Well, what I actually end up doing is, thankfully the licensed dealers want to see me stop this. So I track those cars. Mm -hmm. And then I work with our tax fraud investigation unit and we refer them over for tax fraud evasion. Wow. Um, so Al so Capone, if you may. There you go. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I know the director over there and um, 
I think I actually framed it one time like the handcuffs or something that mm -hmm. Capone actually had. So it's uh, it's really neat. I mean, go <laughs> by there because you want to go by New Mexico taxation, not because you know you're being summoned to be there. But I did I did have a question because one thing that I was thinking about that's very confusing is a lot of times like say Craigslist, you know, and you you go to that. Um, you know, buy it from an individual or whatever. There are also dealers that are in that marketplace. Mm -hmm. I think in some ways, maybe they're creating a little confusion there too because they're also in the marketplace. Am, well, I, am I wrong? Well, well there's, a, there's a little nuance because dealers um, are supposed to pay five bucks and be listed under the dealer section. So anything that you see under the non-dealer section is theoretically an individual mm -hmm. selling their own personal vehicle. Because that's sort of the implied contract, mm -hmm. right? When you're buying person to person, this has been right. your car, you're right. ready to sell it. And the point of the, uh, these, these illegal dealers is, you know, unlike a licensed dealer who gives you a 15 day, 500 mile warranty by law, and they have to have been inspected by law, and there's some protection for the end user. You know, these cats just put them out there, often significantly damaged, often misrepresented, but at a minimum costing you a lot in terms of additional tax, and you're sort of adding to a lawless environment. What's yeah, how many of those cars are, are probably stolen? There are a portion of them that are <laughs> stolen. So I work with um, with law enforcement on right. stolen vehicles. And we see a lot of surety bonds, which a surety bond is a lost or stolen title. For example, the darts that you referenced earlier yeah. today, those darts, you may the person may not have the title, or the title may have fallen out of the system. So you would go through what we refer to as the surety bond process. When you obtain a title via the surety bond process, we research that for you. And oftentimes, I'd say we probably hit three to four a month, mm. and those are processed out of my office as well. Ah. And so we discover all well, of these. Guys. I may have to call you on one of them because I'll I do know that we have two sets of keys, three titles, but now we're checking VIN numbers against the titles. Mm -hmm. So it, at least um, I know where to go. If people are listening and they wanted to get in contact with you, Mark, well, I'll first get your information and then yours. So if they wanted to get more information, where would they go? Right, well, you would go to um, nmiada.com. Uh, there's a section uh, on resources and there's a lot of, uh, you know, sort of consumer protection resources there, as there are on the MBD site, which I'm sure. So the motor vehicle website is www.mbd, the abbreviation for motor vehicle division, dot New Mexico, spelling out the whole word, unfortunately, <laughs> dot gov. And on our website, there's a black toolbar. And over on the far right-hand side of the black toolbar, it says Dealer Partner Recycle. Because, of course, partners and recyclers as well. You click under there, under MVD-related businesses, there's a user guide on how to become a licensed dealer. What, how to file a complaint against a licensed dealer as well as an unlicensed dealer. There's several different user guides. But one of the things that's very important is that new used car dealers, not franchise. So we're not talking about the Toyota stores or the Honda right, yeah, stores. Right, we're not talking about the dealerships, we're, right? Yeah, not the big franchise right. stores, but the independent dealers are required to go through eight hours of education Ooh. where they learn what the forms are and what happens if you don't complete the forms. How the, to protect the consumer, but more importantly, how to protect you from making a bad decision and impacting the consumer. And so thankfully we, are partnered with NMIDA, and NMIDA provides that education resource. Well, she made it sound better than N-M-I-A-A, -A, <laughs> where I have to like see it in my mind. NMIDA's uh, much cooler. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then of course, you know, we, you know, both of us are uh, you know, on the Better Business Bureau That's right. board. There's also, you can check there uh, for dealer ratings. Um, if you have a problem, you can also um, lodge a complaint there. And one of the things we were talking about today, actually, with the BBB is the whole mediation opportunities that, right. that are there. So right. um, in court, nobody wins. I mean, even the judge doesn't win because in a lot of cases, they've got a lot of other cases. So definitely check out the resources you have available. You can always go to the New Mexico Motorsports Report at nmmotorsportsreport.com. Send me a message. I can, you know, 
send you a link or CC you on an email to them. So if you miss any of that information, we've got a whole lot more coming up, including we're going to talk with uh, Jeff and actually Spencer Hill's going to interview Jeff with some trophy trucks. So if you don't know what that is, you definitely want to stay tuned. You've been listening to the New Mexico Motorsports Report here on the ProView Network. Sadie's is a proud supporter of New Mexico high school sports and athletics, and we here at ProView Networks would like to thank Sadie's for their continued support in helping us bring you all of your New Mexico high school sports coverage. For 55 years, people have bought trucks from Tillery in Los Lunas. We have a great selection of vehicles, the quality service department, and some of the best deals in the state. But most importantly, we found people prefer to buy trucks from people who actually drive trucks. Tillery is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Locally owned and operated, located in Las Lunas, right off I-25, exit 203. Hey, New Mexico, come check out the newly remodeled guest rooms at the new Wyndham Albuquerque Hotel and Conference Center, featuring 309 rooms, 30,000 square feet of meeting space. New Mexico's only indoor water park featuring the Wave Runner. 2,200 square foot fitness center with hydro massage chairs. Also enjoy breakfast at our new Manzanita Grill and watch your favorite team play at Altitude Sports Bar and Grill. It's all at Wyndham Albuquerque Hotel and Conference Center. Hey everyone, Adam Deal here with ProView Networks. Extreme Clean is a proud sponsor and supporter of ProView Networks and all high school sports athletics. Owner Mike McLean and Extreme Clean specialize in carpet cleaning for apartment, realty, business, and residential clients. With over 20 years experience, attention to detail and quality customer service matters. For more information, give them a call 505-221-6440, Extreme Clean. Terry Cosper Insurance Agency is a proud partner with ProView Networks and a proud supporter of New Mexico High School Athletics. Terry has been a local farmer's agent for over 20 years for auto, home, life, and business insurance. Just like high school sports are important, so are teen drivers. For more information, call Terry or one of his licensed staff members at 898-5556. Quotes are available for you. Get into the game with Garden Swartz Team Sales. They have everything you need from screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing services, high school letterman jackets, and all high school and club uniforms and individual and team apparel with the most reliable brands like Speedline, Rawlings, and Wilson. And don't forget to check out the latest F7 shut helmet. It's all at Garden Swartz Team Sales. Give them a call, 505-884-1234. Garden Swartz Team Sales. Nothing completes a trip downtown like a visit to Lindy's Cafe. You won't find a more relaxing restaurant to unwind at. Located on 5th and Central, proud supporters of ProView Networks. Lindy strives to be a friendly and welcoming place. Lindy's, a great, a great place, place to be seen. The New Mexico High School Coaches Association, established in 1941, is an organization of New Mexico's best and most professional interscholastic coaches. Coaches across work daily to help our student athletes excel in the classroom, on the field of play, and in our communities. Students that participate in interscholastic activities attain higher grades, higher graduation rates, and higher wages. Responsible for the North-South All-Star Games, statewide coaches award program, and providing multiple professional development opportunities for New Mexico's coaches. Be a great coach by coaching beyond the game. My truck's my baby, and the only guys to get to work on her are my guys. They know how important she is, and they treat her with respect. When it's time for maintenance, they check her out from head to toe, and my guys don't wait for something to go wrong. They let me know what they see so that little problems don't become big ones. And when it comes to technology, my guys are setting the pace. From diagnostics to communication, they're always ahead of the curve. Do I trust them? You bet I do. These are my guys. Make them your guys, too. Gecko's Bar and Tapas, a proud supporter of ProView Networks. It's been a fan favorite spot for food lovers and sports fans. With not one, but two great locations, including outdoor patio, an atmosphere you won't want to miss. Geckos, off Academy, and in Knob Hill. Mexico Motorsports Report here on the ProView Network. 
I'm really excited to share our next guest with you all. His name is Jeff Argo, and he's the driver of the Half Fast Desert Racing number 140, 1473 trophy truck in the Outlaw Desert Racing Series. Jeff, how are you doing today? Doing good. How are you doing, Spencer? That's a long number. That's a long number. <laughs> <laughs> where did uh, where did your number and the name of your team come from, by the way? So the number is based on the class of truck, so it's a 1400 truck. Okay. And then the last two digits are whatever number you wind up with. And then the name, so the name's kind of a story. My dad, uh, my dad when he was in high school, he was into boats. Okay. And uh, he built a boat when he was in high school. And everybody in his family told him he was doing everything half-assed, that he wasn't mm -hmm. doing it right. So when he got the boat done, he named it half-assed. And then he ended up racing boats later on in life. And, and all of his boats kind of stuck with the name half-assed of some variant. And, and even my current boat is half-assed squared. So when we started mm -hmm. the race team, we figured there had to be something that made sense. So half-assed desert racing is what it turned into. And of course, that's half H-A-L-F. Yes, half, -A -S -T. Yeah, half fast, not how fast, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very cool. And really, I wanted to talk to you today because off-road racing is one of the most unique types of motorsport out there to me. And there's events held all over the world, and it's in some of the gnarliest terrain out there. Mm -hmm. What made you fall in love with that sport, and how did you get started in it? So I kind of grew up as a desert rat. You know, all my, mm -hmm. my family and friends, we rode dirt bikes um, out in the desert all the time. And uh, my dad raced dirt bikes. I grew up kind of racing dirt bikes in the desert quite a bit. And then as every 15 year old kid kind of does when you get a driver's license, you go out in the desert and drive around whatever car yeah. you have. And one thing led to another and um, continued to race dirt bikes for a while. Um, Off-roaded a bunch, you know, we had Jeeps and stuff growing mm -hmm. up. So, so as that kind of continued and progressed, um, I, I ran into a friend that was in the process of building a class 10 car when I was shortly out of high school, wasn't okay. too old. And, and he needed help building it and he wanted to know if I wanted to race it with him. So we built this car over the course of a year or two and then raced it in all the local New Mexico races, the Arizona races, did pretty good. It was a really cool car. It was a class 10 tube frame, all chromoly buggy. Oh, had nice. a ZX-14 street bike motor engine, yeah. their engine in it. So it was kind of unique. It wasn't very common, um, bright green car. Pretty, pretty cool car though. So we raced it quite a while. I was the co-driver, did a bunch of navigating for him. Mm -hmm. And then um, he got out of the sport, sold the car and me and two other friends decided we wanted to kind of get into it. So we built a, a truck and from there, the truck kind of, it was a, it was a three way deal, some partners, uh -huh. um, took us about a year to build it and we raced it in a bunch of the local races. And I still have that same truck today. And it just kind of evolved from there. You know, we had just a group of friends that were all into riding dirt bikes, driving around the desert, going everybody to races just wanted to go fast. and everybody wanted to go faster. Yeah. So we kind of just pulled everything together and, and that's what it became today, so. Very cool, and I think we actually have some pictures of that trophy truck that we can pull up on the screen now. One of the most fascinating things to me in off-road racing is the amount of work that goes into building these trucks and really upgrading the vehicles. Yeah, definitely. Um, many of these trucks really, for example, started out as street vehicles and were built from the ground up. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about the process of starting with one of these street vehicles and shaping them into one of these high travel, high horsepower trucks that are just monsters on the road? Absolutely. So that, that particular truck in the picture there, it's, um, that, that's kind of the, the, the beginning into that spectrum. You know, that actually started life as a Ford Ranger and being in the 1450 class, um, what that basically means is that a, it's a, it's a kind of a no limit truck, but it has to have a steel cab and working doors. So it started off life as a pre-runner is what they call okay. it, right? So it was people that had these trucks they'd put a lot of money into, but needed a class to race them in. Gotcha. And it's turned into kind of a, a, a legit class nowadays. You know, it's actually a real big class in a lot of races. Mm -hmm. So that, that truck really has, surprisingly, as, as you witnessed, it has a lot of, a lot of Ranger parts still on it. And, and that was something that I was shocked about, about yeah. how many parts were like pretty much stock yeah, on definitely. that truck. Yeah, it, it's cool. I mean, it really, you can, an average person can take a truck like that mm -hmm. and and you don't really have to have tremendous fabrication skills or anything to get to that point. I mean, if you can weld a little and bolt some parts on, you can buy long travel stuff and all for these trucks and go out and have fun. I mean, you may not be competitive in a top class, but, but you're going to go out and have fun, right? It's what everybody wants to do anyway. It's why you started mm -hmm. doing it in the first place. So on the other end of the spectrum, we have another truck that's, it's, it's a 7213 is the number of it. Okay. And we'll be racing it again in the next race. We haven't raced it in a while because it's been broke, but it's a, it's kind of a no limit truck. It's, you know, like a trophy truck really is no limits. That's, that's kind of whatever mm -hmm. you can afford, you can build. This particular truck is a no limit V6 truck. So it's 7,200, so it's full tube frame. Um, okay. There's no rules about, besides track width, there's really no rules about anything involved with that whole truck. So it has, a, it has an all aluminum bush cup NASCAR motor in it, dry sump, nice. uh, 550 horse uh, SVO Ford motor in it, and turbo 400, and it has 10 inch um, tube works or axle in it. A lot of expensive parts on the truck. So 
but it, but it, it evolved from somebody starting with a Ranger at one point in time, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and, and on the other end of the spectrum, you have the buggies, right? That are built purely ground up with mm -hmm. a two bender or however somebody chooses to go that route. Really unique vehicles. Yeah, there. yeah, and you can build whatever you want. And that's, that's kind of the neat part about it is that there's no, nothing's cookie cutter. You know, you mm -hmm. can build what you want to build. And if you think this will work better than the truck next to you, so be it, build it. You know, it's and not against you the rules. Just go for it. Yeah, and you go for it. Yeah, and you've also had the ability to involve your family a lot in the sport. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, which is really neat for me to see. I love mm -hmm. seeing that. How much does it mean to you to have Jesse and the kids involved in what you're doing? So it's awesome, right? You get the support from everybody. It's so much easier when you have your friends and family want mm -hmm. to participate in what you want to do. And not just participate, but my wife co-drives. You know, she's, mm -hmm. she's not just there to support us. She's, she's there to actually involve herself in the sport. And the kids, you know, they love it. They love being around that stuff. And my mom and dad, they support it a ton. We have, we turn it into a, a camping trip. You know, we have barbecues out mm -hmm. there. We have a lot of these races you can camp at. So, you know, we'll, we'll cook hamburgers and, in a pit stop, I'll eat a hamburger. You know, it's it's, it's kind of so a cool unique. deal. That, yeah, that it's blows my unique. mind yeah. that you're able to come yeah. in and just like almost like relax a little yeah. bit during yeah. a pit stop. That's yep. so unique to me. While you're welding on your broken truck, you can eat <laughs> yeah. a hamburger. Yeah, exactly. And your son Brandon's also dipped his foot into a little bit of racing as well, right? Yes. Yeah, he got into arena cross when he was five, so a couple years ago. And it's kind of cool to see him. You know, he's seeing somebody race on the other side is always different. You know, you see uh, when he wrecks, it's a completely different scenario. You know, because mm -hmm. you don't know. The you can't, dad run, you can't run out, out and get him. You know, you can't go out there yeah. and save him. Um, when he's getting tangled up in a group of kids that are, you know, a lot bigger than him for the age, you just never know what's going to happen. And yeah, it's just it's a completely different scenario to watch somebody do it versus participate. So yeah, and I had the honor of attending your Cinco de Baja race, which was first of all, thank you for such a cool experience out there. You want to tell everybody about kind of how that event went and our funny story that we had trying to just get back home to the pits. Yeah, so, so that was cool. That was what's neat about desert racing is we went out and. And actually, the truck had broke, and, and all my friends were, mm -hmm. you know, running Baywatch style through the pitch, trying to find parts to fix this truck, and, and welding and grinding under it, and asked you to get in the truck for the next lap if you wanted to. So we took Spencer out, and um, mm -hmm. we made a, we were up in the pace every lap, and I upped it up a little bit more when you were in the truck with us, and I, we made it, what, about two miles from the finish of that lap, I think. It was I so think. close. It yeah, was we so were really close. close. It was almost dark, and we, uh, we broke a yoke on the back of the tranny. So... So we got underneath the truck and Spencer was handing me tools, you know, we're getting our race suits all greasy and, mm -hmm. and, and we get the yoke kind of back up in there and it's like every foot means something, right? Like, yeah. like just trying to finish. So, so we're shoving the yoke back up in there and we make it two feet and we try it again and make it three feet and finally we had to throw in the towel and, and that's the other interesting part, right? Wherever you break, you can be 50 miles from your pits. Yeah, you never and quite know, you never know where you're going to so be. so unique to me because so, with us, our pits are you yeah. know, right there, right on the side yeah. of the tracks. So we can just get towed off. With us, yeah, I mean, we, we were hiking, we were hiking hills ourselves. trying to get cell phone service because the radio wouldn't work. And yeah, yeah, it's a it's a really cool deal. It's a different, and you're out there experiencing nature while you're doing it, right? It's it's cool because it's not just you're not just broken in the middle of the desert. You're, it's cool. It's fun yeah. all the way around. And it, it's really a team sport, which is, is one yeah. thing that I really like about it. Like you were saying, when you did have that part malfunction, everybody hopped in. Mm -hmm. it, it was it was really a group experience, which is so cool for me to see. I love seeing family get involved. Uh, it's just an amazing sport. I love the fan base too. It's so cool to see people ride alongside the track. And I know there are a lot of people that help you out both on and off the track every week. Is there a couple people that you might want to thank? Yeah, absolutely. So, so my wife, Jessie, you know, mm -hmm. she's fantastic, supports me. She, she rides in the truck. Um, our three kids are awesome. You know, they, they allow us to do this. They're, mm -hmm. they're good kids and they go out there and they have fun doing it. Great kids. Great kids. And then I have, um, my parents, obviously my parents, you know, got me into it, supported everything I did. Um, they participate, they cook, they help. My dad's a fantastic fabricator. He, he builds parts for the truck when I need him to. Um, and then I have, you know, some really good friends like Mitch and Jesse Martinez, Kyle and Jenny Zink, um, Tom Zink, David Holful, or du David, David uh, Mankins, Dustin Holful. Mm -hmm. um, all those people like that have really helped us. They come out to all the races, they wrench, they weld, they do everything. And then um, I would like to thank also Outlaw Desert Racing. You know, those two guys, Carlos and Drew, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're trying to make this work really well for New Mexico, grassroots desert racing. It's kind of been gone for a while, a little bit of events here and there, but um, the next race is down at Elephant Butte, and uh, they've been really trying to bring this all back to New Mexico and give us somewhere to race, so it's really cool of them. Great, yeah. and if people wanted to keep up with your racing, how may they do that? So the best way is uh, Half Fast Desert Racing Facebook page, mm -hmm. and like, like Spencer mentioned, it's Half Fast, H-A-L-F-A-S-T, one word. And that's where we post all of our updates and our schedule on our, our future events. Very cool. Thank yeah. you for joining us today. Thank Appreciate you, you coming on the show. Very cool to talk to you about something a lot of people don't get to see here in New Mexico. 
You can catch Jeff Argo in action at the Veterans 150 Memorial Day weekend at Elephant Butte. Don't go anywhere because we will be right back with more action on the New Mexico Motorsports Report here on the ProView Network. Dreamstyle Remodeling has been wowing homeowners in New Mexico since 1989. Selected as Best Custom Home Remodeler for three consecutive years by readers of the Albuquerque Journal, we're also your exclusive provider for top home improvement brands like Renewal by Anderson, Four Seasons, Blaze King, and many others. Founded and headquartered in Albuquerque, Dreamstyle Remodeling is family-owned and now employs more than 500 people across the southwestern U.S. In fact, we've helped more than 60,000 homeowners improve their home in New Mexico, Arizona, California, Idaho, and West Texas. We're committed to providing a superior customer experience. We've earned 4.6 stars with hundreds of online reviews and have an A-plus with the BBB. Dreamstyle Remodeling is a proud supporter of UNM Athletics. Visit our beautiful 10,000-square-foot showroom at 1460 Renaissance Boulevard across from Sam's Club or dreamstyleremodeling.com to make your home remodeling dreams come true. Legacy Boxing Promotions presents Route to Glory. Bad Blood, June 23rd in Legends Theater at Route 66 Casino, Albuquerque. It's Bad Blood in the co-main event when Mike Matt Alderete fights Max Mad Heyman in the main event. Josh Pitbull Torres against Christian Cabral. Undefeated Jason Sanchez takes on Eric Manriquez. Aaron Angel Baby Perez fights George Royball. Plus, fights by Ronnie Mongoose Baca, Christian Castigo Castillo, Matthew Papitas Escobel, and Augustine Perez. Route to Glory, Bad Blood. When I train for American Ninja Warrior, I schedule regular workouts to stay in shape. To keep my car in Ninja Tough shape, I head to a Napa Auto Care Center for regular maintenance and genuine Napa Auto Parts. Like brakes and batteries. I trust my Napa Auto Care Center for quality parts and quality service. And with the 24 month, 24,000 mile nationwide warranty, I drive away with peace of mind every time. Visit AutoCareNM.com to find a location near you. The Barley Bowl, proud sponsor of ProView Networks for over nine years, is pleased to introduce Black Iron Catering. From weddings and family reunions to birthdays and office parties, Black Iron Catering is perfect for any event. Contact Jamie at 505-459-8259 and book your event today. Black Iron Catering, let us bring our kitchen to you. Car Crafters, proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Are you sure we're supposed to be doing this? Don't worry, I've watched him do it a thousand times. Come on, what's the worst that can happen? No, bad dog. Hi, welcome to Car Crafters. What happened? Uh, don't worry, we'll make it like it never happened. Car Crafters, it's like it never happened. Folks, there's no other way but to be all in. Either he's Lord of all, or he is not Lord at all and you can experience the real and authentic true life change that only God can provide to humanity see when we truly encounter Jesus and purpose to know him and follow his teachings hashtag life change will occur Duke City Sports Bar proud supporter of Pro View Sports and New Mexico Youth Athletics Catch all the sports action from high school, college, pros, and MMA on one of our 35 HD TVs. Start your night off right with any selection from our delicious menu prepared with fresh, never frozen ingredients. Duke City Sports Bar, Albuquerque's newest sports bar. Located on Eubank and Montgomery, dial 505-433-4020. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations, or visit us online at goldenfriedatabq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of Provy Sports Network. For 55 years, people have bought trucks from Tillery in Los Lunas. We have a great selection of vehicles, the quality service department, and some of the best deals in the state. But most importantly, we found people prefer to buy trucks from people who actually drive trucks. Tillery is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Locally owned and operated, located in Las Lunas, right off I-25, exit 203. 
Welcome back to the New Mexico Motorsports Report here on the ProView Network channel Comcast 26. And Spencer, a lot of great racing over the weekend, but once again we had weather get involved in the, uh, the IndyCar race had to end up today. Mother uh, Nature not playing out like we want it to. Absolutely, even though I, I, I do like driving in the rain and racing in the rain. You rain know, racing but, does get exciting and yeah. it was exciting this week for the Grand Prix of Alabama. Absolutely. So finally uh, finished up with uh, Joseph Newgarden uh, winning the race. Ryan Hunter Ray, James Hinchcliffe ended up with the uh, final podium spot in third. This Robert Wickens, though, I think you need to keep an eye on this on this rookie and Sebastian Bourdais. I think is still maintaining that position mainly because you know um, he had such a strong start, um, such a fantastic team. Of course, there's a shot of the rooster tails coming off of the wheels, and it must have been. It uh, must have been crazy, but uh, I actually did the Skip Barber Driver School out at Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, uh, and on the Friday session, it was raining mm -hmm. like that. And, I mean, now, granted, we were doing 90, not 190. Yeah. Um, but still, the rooster tails, and all you could see is that little red light. But uh, Two uh, great stories out of the Grand Prix of Alabama, though, yeah. uh, on Monday, where they continued the race from Sunday. I want to talk quick about Robert Wickens. Talk yeah, about a ahead. rookie that's on fire yeah. right now. That's incredible to me in that Honda that he's doing so good. Uh, really lit a fire up under everybody in Phoenix. Right. And then this weekend in the Grand Prix of Alabama, incredible job. And again, with Bourdais, went a little bit strategy. <laughs> tried to stay on those slicks as long as he could Monday. But uh, the rain just came a little bit too soon for him. And he ended up having to pit late. And that really hurt him in that event. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and in pitting in road course racing, um, is, is a lot different than pitting on the short track. You don't go a lap down, but boy, a half a lap back is, you know, can be a Huge mile, difference. two miles, two miles long. So your uh, end your car standings, uh, Joseph Newgarden now takes the lead over Alexander Rossi. Sebastian Bourdais is tied with Graham Rahal. Now, Graham Rahal, of course, uh, uh, took out uh, Simon Pagano last week, and so that has really opened his point strategy. Uh, James Hinchcliffe solid at, at 118, but already there's a 40 point, you can see it, there's a 40 point differential uh, between first and fifth. So this is one of those things where the season could get away with you in a hurry, and the IndyCar season is a little bit shorter than the NASCAR season. Got a shot here of, uh, uh, of our, our winner, there he is. Joseph Newgarden. Now very it's, happy. Yeah, he's very he's very happy. But so cool is he, you know he's an American, you know, and and having um, um, you know Americans doing so well. And let's see how he can do in the 500 coming up. It's not not too far away. I think he has a promising shot over in the 500. Of course, Alexander Rossi, past winner of that event, he's going to be looking to yeah. jump into the points lead down there. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about Xfinity racing. Absolutely. So, I mean, Richmond really did perform. Uh, Christopher Bell getting it done over rookie. First time, Noah Gregson, Elliot Sadler uh, finishing third, uh, Matt Tiff and uh, Austin Sindrick uh, round out your top three. But Christopher Bell, I mean, getting it done. And I tell you, I don't know if it's hanging around Kyle Busch or not, mm -hmm. uh, but Christopher Bell was, was not happy with finishing first because a first-time driver was on his bumper. And I tell you what I thought was really exciting is, and I know that there's a lot of debate back and forth about whether the cup driver should not be driving in the Xfinity race. But I tell you, the last, last couple of races um, without cup drivers have been pretty exciting. Yeah, I, from the beginning, I've always said cup drivers in Xfinity does not bother me any, no. or truck series. But last couple of weekends, it's getting to that point where I'm saying, <laughs> I don't care anymore. Right. Because this racing is amazing. Right. Richmond, on uh, Friday night, it was just bumper to bumper action throughout the whole race. Noah Gregson, great debut for that rookie in that number yep. 18 for Joe yep. Gibbs Racing. He was right on the back bumper of Christopher Bell. I think he could have done it. Uh, he did a lot of lane changes late in the going, trying to find anything right. he could to get around him. Uh, did not quite get the finish uh, that he really re wanted, being that first place finish. But regardless, amazing run for your first race ever in an Xfinity car. A lot of eyes are going to be on that young driver. Yeah, I, I thought it, I thought it was an excellent drive. And you're right. He was trying different lanes. He was trying to figure out a way to ra uh, around him. And I tell you, one of the things that I think that Christopher Bell does really uh, well, and which you know puts him at the top of the point standing here, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second. But um, but what he does is he comes off the corner, so from center corner out. 
he's got more speed coming off. And of course, as you know, mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you can, you can, you know, kind of shut the door a little bit, um, you know, kind of uh, get on the brake a little bit earlier and have that speed off. When you're trying to overtake somebody, it's a little hard to overcome that. But as we, uh, we look at the point standings now, you got Tyler Reddick uh, is in uh, second in the points, Elliot Sadler, Daniel Hemrick, and of course, the, the little gator, is in, is in third. I, I can't believe that. Uh, I think you're going to see a real run, but it's a super strong team. All right, let's talk some cup now. And uh, well, let's look at the Xfinity playoff picture. Oh, real yeah, quick. yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, let's go. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So, so what's your Reed, thoughts? Ryan Reed right here. He yeah. is doing really good job at just pacing himself. But the person that I want to highlight here is Ross Chastain in that JD Motorsports number four car. Mm -hmm. He is having the season of a lifetime right now. Lower team of course, as far as funding goes, mm -hmm. but they are making a big splash in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. They are ahead of Austin Cindric, Michael Annette, Kaz Grawa, all pretty big names in that series right now, and he's doing an amazing job putting up top tens really consecutively. Well, and, and a win in your end uh, could make a big difference this coming weekend at Talladega. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So let's Let's talk a little uh, uh, Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. Of course, Kyle Busch gets it done again. And I tell you, if you it, it was a story of multiple phases of that race. Because there was at one point where the Fords were really dominating this race. And then all of a sudden, you see Chase Elliott uh, get in there and come home second. So this is going to be hard. As I mean, of course, Talladega is also restrictor plated, and so it's kind of a balance to where all these short tracks and then, of course, you know, with, with the big super speedway, um, Chevrolet has maybe looked a little bit better than where they might be. We'll see when we get back to the mile and a half tracks. Uh, Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, uh, Kevin Harvick, your top five. And what's uh, really amazing is when you look at straight points alone, Joey Logano is actually now moved second in, in overall points. But, uh, but quite, a, quite a win by Kyle Busch. Yeah, Kyle Busch doing a great job going three wins in a row yep. uh, for that Toyota. He did an amazing job. Really wasn't the fastest car. You got to feel for a driver like Martin Truex Jr. Right. Last pit stop of the night came in, jack issue. Right. And man, you just, when you're Cole Pern, Martin Truex Jr., that's got to be frustrating because that would have been his first win on a short track and it was just ripped out of him within 40 to go. Yeah, and especially, I mean, you're defending champ. I mean, everybody's, um, everybody's gunning for you. And, of course, uh, uh, in the standings, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, uh, Clint Boyer, uh, Martin Trux, and Austin Dillon. Of course, these are all uh, adjusted for victory. So we could see somebody, mm -hmm. of course, win. And, of course, you know, Kyle Busch. And, I, I mean, I did have to laugh a little bit because they kept showing uh, Samantha Bush, you know, with, with yeah. all the yellows that came out and stuff like that. Um, and it, you know, I will have to say that I do love how she seems to live and die with, with him on there. But I tell you what, he goes up in the stands afterwards um, and, and really enjoying it with the crowd. And so it's one of those things. It's the Tony Stewart factor, right? Everybody couldn't stand how brash and what a pain in the butt Tony Stewart was. But by the end, he was one of the favorites. I think Kyle Busch is moving towards that. Kyle Busch definitely maturing now as he moves on further in his career. I got to tell you, 10 years ago, if he went up in those stands, he would not make it back out. <laughs> but he well, went up there and celebrated with everybody, and he was loved, too. Well, especially at Richmond. I and mean, when you consider, I mean, it took a podcast to start, you know, uh, maybe bring in Junior Nation and Kyle Nation um, together, Rowdy Nation. Let's take a look at the, uh, the uh, cup playoff pictures. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, seven-time champion. He's uh, sitting there right ahead of rookie uh, William Byron, of course, there's a shot of uh, Byron's car. And I tell you, he drove a lot more like Jeff Gordon in this race. And so uh, we'll see if we're going to get uh, get to move forward. Uh, pa uh, Ryan Newman, uh, uh, Paul Menard, uh, who's having actually a really great season, always seems to start strong. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Um, on the edge there. Yeah, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., that's going to be a guy that you are going to want to watch this weekend at Talladega. All of his wins thus far have come on restrictor plate tracks, and he is good. I don't know why he's so good at restrictor plates, but drivers are knocking on his door to figure out why, because it seems like every time we go to a restrictor plate track, whether it's Daytona or Talladega, he's the guy that we're going to have to beat. Well, I mean, I thought you were going to take a shot right there and go, that's why dirt track racers can get it done, right? <laughs> 
All right, well, this has been another edition of the uh, New Mexico Motorsports Report here on the ProView Network, uh, Comcast 26. But if you missed any of them, you want to check out anything, you just want to connect with this, nmmotorsportsreport.com. Send us a message, we'll reach back to you. If you got something cool that you're into, that you think our listeners are going to be into, definitely check us out. You've been watching the New Mexico Motorsports Report here on the ProView Network.